Question number 11, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question to the Prime Minister and asks, does he have confidence in the Overseas Investment Office and his ministers, the Honourable Jonathan Coleman and the Honourable Morris Williamson, over the issue of the latest Trefar Farms deal? If so, why? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't have responsibility for the Overseas Investment Office, but I do have confidence in the two ministers. And I would note that the ministers are not party to any, quote, deal with regard to the Crafer Farms. They're simply assessing an application as they are required to do under the Overseas Investment Act, which Labor brought into office in 2005. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. It seems that the Prime Minister was asked about the issue, not a oh, deal. Oh, sorry, is this a point yes, of order? question. Sorry? Supplementary question. Oh, I beg your pardon. The right of Winston Peters. Yeah. I beg Seeing your pardon. the Prime Minister was asked in the primary question about the issue, not of the deal, uh, how can he have confidence in either of his, of his two ministers when a High Court decision has already so sadly demonstrated that they either don't understand or are prepared to comply by the law they are acting under? The right honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when the law was brought in by Labour, in 2005, the understanding of the application of the law in terms of the benefits test as interpreted by uh, Crown Law and the advisers to the Overseas Investment Office was a before and after test, not a with and without test. And I would note that every application, including ones that were made when that member was a part of that Labor government was made with the with or without test, not uh, the before and after test, not the with or without test. That's right. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Does the Prime Minister still not understand that those two ministers were, upon the High Court's decision, found to have not even read sections of the uh, legislation on which they were meant to act? And what did he mean about New Zealanders not becoming tenants in their own land when under the agreement that those ministers are looking at the Corp will be paying about 18 million a year by way of the equivalent 50-50 share milking deal on the proposition before them right now. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, there are previous ministers who have known not to read their papers, but the current ones I have in my administration do. <laughs> question. Is this supplementary question? The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Can I ask the uh, Prime Minister, why is it that he thinks that that is an adequate answer when there were sections in the legislation which the High Court went to pains to point out that both the overseas and the two ministers and the overseas investment office seem to have totally overlooked. What would give anybody confidence that now those ministers are going to go ahead as they did before and with the full backing of the Mandarin candidate we have here as Prime Minister? The right honourable Prime Minister. <laughs> Speaker, with the greatest, with the greatest, with the greatest, with the greatest of respect, um, I don't think the member understands Justice Miller's application of the law. And with the greatest of respect to the member, my mother was Austrian and my father was English. The nearest I've come to China is when I visited Beijing. Outside of that, uh, outside of that, I don't have any Chinese blood in me. Question number twelve, Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.